Hello and welcome to a trigonometric ratio class. But today we will be talking about the trig ratios in relation to the unit circles, the sines, the cosines, and the tans of angles. I'm Uncle Ed. Okay, so how do we actually go about the trig ratios? They are actually gotten from the right angle triangle so we're giving the right angle triangle with sides a b c that's capital letter a b c where capitals a b c are the angles of the triangle and small letters a b c are the sides of the triangle so if the angle at c is theta then side b is the hypotenuse side a is the adjacent and side c is the opposite so it's important that you note that there's a mnemonic trick we usually use when you want to get or to remember the trig ratios. It is called SOHCAHTOA. That is S O H C A H T O A. SOHCAHTOA. S O H stands for sine theta, which is is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. You can take that step further. We have that cosec theta is the inverse of sine theta. So instead of opposite over hypotenuse, we have hypotenuse over opposite. Sec theta is the inverse of cos theta, and cot theta is the inverse of tan theta. So these six trig ratios are important for you to, to memorize or learn going forward because you're going to need them in solving trig questions. Now let's look at the ratios of angles 0 to 360 degrees. Angles are generally measured in an anti-clockwise direction and this is done within a unit circle that is divided into four equal parts we call this part quadrants what makes it a unit circle it is a unit circle because the distance from the center of the circle to the circumference is actually one one unit one unit so you see the coordinates at the points 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees are just one for the x coordinate or the y coordinate and zero for either the x or the y coordinates. So you have the first, second, third quadrant. Our emphasis in this class is actually to check and to know the behavior of trig ratios in each of these quadrants. So from the first quadrant, how the sine, cos, and tan behave. And that is what we're looking at. So for the first quadrant, we have a triangle in the circle. That is the first quadrant of the circle with sides, with the adjacent as x, Opposite as y and the hypotenuse as z. Sine theta becomes y over z. Cos theta gives us x over y. Tan theta gives us y over x. Remember, we're using the trig ratios of Sokatoa. So the ratios of these angles are all positive for the first quadrant. Why for the second quadrant? The triangle moves to the second quadrant. So we have side y, hypotenuse z, adjacent, minus x. Sine 180 minus theta gives us y over x. You may ask, why is it 180 minus theta? We have to present the angle in such a way that it is 180 minus theta because if you look at diagram that is the second circle we have you see the blue arc the blue arrow 
which tells us the angle we are actually looking for. And it falls within the second quadrant. So in order to get that angle, we have to subtract 180 minus theta. So we subtract theta from 180 to get that angle. So what we're trying to say is this. The sine of that angle, which covers the blue arc, is actually y over z. And if you do that, you discover that by observation, it equals sine theta. That is, it is the same number as sine theta. While cos 180 minus theta gives us minus x over y. Because, remember, the adjacent of the angle is minus x. So that is going to give us a negative answer as cos, minus cos theta. Tan 180 minus theta gives us y over minus x. And because of the minus x, we have minus tan theta. Let's move to the example to see how the behavior of this crashes are. So we have sine 135, which is also sine 180 minus 45. Remember, you have to write the angle in terms of 180 minus theta. So when you punch that, you have sine 45, which gives us 0 0.7071. Same principle applies with cos 150 and tan 142. You notice that for cos 150, we have a negative answer, and for tan 142, we have a negative answer. So in the second quadrant, sine of theta always gives us a positive answer. Let's move to the third quadrant. The third quadrant, in this case, we have opposite as minus y, adjacent as minus x, and hypotenuse as z. So our angles will no longer be 180 minus. We now have 180 plus because the angles are stretched to the third quadrant. In this case, sine becomes minus y over z, which gives us minus sine theta. Cos becomes minus x over z, which also gives us minus cos theta. And tan becomes minus y over minus x, which is the same thing as y over x when the negative sign cancels out, cancels each other. So we have tan theta. This is for angles that lie between 180 degrees and 270. And to the fourth quadrant, we have minus y as the opposite x as the adjacent and z as the hypotenuse so look at the angles again the blue arc where the blue arc covers so sine 360 minus theta which is the area where the blue arc covers gives us minus y over z which is minus sine theta because of the negative y because 360 minus theta gives us x over z so we have positive cos theta. Tan 360 minus theta gives us minus y over x, which gives us minus tan theta. So you'd notice, for the third quadrant, tan is positive. And for the fourth quadrant, cos is positive. So it's important that you take note of all this. So here are examples that show awesome the, the, the brief of what we've talked about, you notice that the sine, the cos, and the tan. In all of the answers, tan is positive for the third quadrant, while cos is positive for the fourth quadrant. So that is to establish the point that we're trying to make in this class. Now, for angles greater than 360 degrees, every increase above 360 is considered as follows. So once the angle crosses 360, say 370, 380, the increase above 360, once it is between 0 and 90 degrees, we consider that angle to be in the first quadrant. So an angle like 370 is going to be in the first quadrant. If the angle, if the increase from 360 is between 980 and 90 and 180 degrees we consider that angle to be in the second quadrant 
If the increase is between 180 and 270 degrees, we consider that angle to be in the third quadrant. Is that clear? And if it's between 270 and 360, we consider the angle to be fourth quadrant. This is talking about the increase from 360 upwards. So here's the summarized table to help you understand quickly. All three ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Only signs is positive in the second quadrant. Only tangent of angles is positive in the third quadrant. And only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. That's quick for you to understand. That's quick for you to understand. So you can look at the table on the right hand side to help you get the mathematical table of what we've been talking about. So here's a mnemonic trick to help you understand or to help you remember the signs in the quadrants. We have ACTS. So we have, we use all students take calculus. If you want to remember it very fast, all students take calculus. All signifies the first quadrant, student signifies the second quadrant, take signifies the third quadrant, and calculus signifies the fourth quadrant. So I hope you've been able to learn one or two things about the behavior of trig ratios in relation to this quadrant. So here are some angles that you have to look for the sines, the cosine, and the tans. It is very simple, please. Pay attention to the signs, to the signs. I mean, whether it's negative or positive. I'm waiting to get your exercises and the answers from for it. See you in the next class. Thank you.